So let's stop for a minute and connect back to something that was mentioned in one of our earlier blogs. Let's be a little more specific about these anonymous method one, method two, and method three. So let's replace these with actual techniques. So if you caught the uh, video blog about exponential smoothing methods, you'll remember that one of them was called simple or single exponential smoothing, another was called Holtz, and another was called Winters. So simple exponential smoothing is for data series that are basically flat. Holtz was for data series that have a trend and Winters was for data series that are seasonal and have a cyclicity to them. So um, the given data series will be closer to one of these and that should play out in the calculations. And you might think, well, again, if you're willing to take the time to look at the series that uh, you could just classify them and make the choice yourself. We've talked about that that's inefficient. It doesn't scale up to large problems. But there's another issue here that makes the calculation a good idea besides its ability to scale up and do a lot of work in a short period of time. And that is that real data series may not be unambiguously in one of these three camps. So let me draw a picture that might represent something like that. Let's suppose that we're looking at sales versus time. And if we had a data series that looks something like this, we would pretty, pretty clearly say that there's no trend and no seasonality. So this particular type of method, simple or single exponential smoothing, would be the one that would give us the most accuracy. However, suppose that what the actual series looks like is more something like this. Now, that's ambiguous. You could say it looks like there was a period of flatness and now it's gone into a period of trend. And these ambiguous pictures unfortunately turn up a lot in real life. Maybe because the world is dynamic and, and the characteristics of the market can change over time. And so actually doing this by eye works best when the world is simple and the world isn't always simple. So the calculations allow us to just say maybe what we're seeing here is the kind of floating that just goes from one level to another and we still want some sort of a flat um, level-based simple exponential smoothing to handle the problem or maybe uh, we'd make a big mistake if we didn't use a trend. Well, both of these approaches can, can be calculated here and we'll see which one actually works for that item. So we don't have to make the eyeball judgment. And sometimes it's difficult even for someone who's seen many, many time series to make a clear call. It's, it, this is the best method, that's the best method. So this objective data-based approach has certain advantages even when you think you're an expert and you think you're going to see a clear picture and you're going to be comfortable making a call about which method to use. Not always. And so it's, that's another reason to go to a forecast tournament instead of making a one-by-one -one gut call about which method to use.